Are video game reviews actually ruining the fun of video games? And you might ask me, how can a review actually ruin people having fun on a video game? And we for sure about to get into that. But before we do, my name is FlyGuyGBG. If you guys like this kind of content, go ahead and give your boy a sub, turn on those notifications, and like this video. Let's jump right into it. Yes, review sites have been a thing for a long time at this point. However, when I was younger, in order for us to actually discover what game we actually wanted to play, we would go to the EB Games, we would go to GameStop, we would go to Funko Land, and we would actually just look at the back of the box and be like, you know what? I think I want to play this. Now it seems like more and more gamers are actually letting reviewers make up their mind about what games they want to play. For whatever reason, these days, gamers are only playing games that are rated in the 80s and 90s on Metacritic. That's crazy. I don't know about y'all, but when I was younger, I had no idea what any game's ratings was on Metacritic. I didn't care. I would just go to EB Games with my dad. We would look at a few games. If we liked how the games looked, we would get the games. Typically, EB Games had really good sales, so we would get like five or six games for like 50 bucks, and we would just enjoy those games. Another quick story. When I was in eighth grade, Grand Theft Auto 3 had just dropped, and Grand Theft Auto 3 really put Grand Theft Auto on the map for real. And I wanted that game bad as hell because all of my friends in school were talking about it. Everyone was talking about that game, and I really wanted to play it. My dad didn't get me that game. He got me Tokyo Extreme Racer Zero. Who? And I'm not going to sit here and act like I did not enjoy that game because I did. I had never heard of this game. But guess what? It didn't matter. It was just something that I just had fun with. It just feels like IGN and GameSpot back in the day were actually just used for cheat codes, and that was about it. Now, people are using it to make their buying decisions. That's wild. Now, that's not to completely discredit reviews because reviews are there for a reason. They are to tell you how a product is and how somebody really feels about said product. That's cool. That's great. But their experience doesn't always equal your experience. And sometimes these reviews... Even when a game has a roadmap to actually be a really good game, when the reviewers come out and the game isn't where they want it to be initially, that game is never able to pick up that momentum that it could have. And then it actually ends up becoming a good game, but because of the scores on Metacritic and so on and so forth, people don't want to play it because it didn't start off good, even though right now it is good. Doesn't make sense. A game that kind of fits that mold is uh, Halo. I think Halo actually had a good start, though, and then they kind of fizzled off with lack of content and so on and so forth, but then they brought content back, and they started to build the game up better, but people already had this negative connotation towards Halo, so people don't want to play it now, and that's because of the media. Sonic the Hedgehog 07 came out, and apparently, I just found this out last week, that a lot of people didn't like that game because of the bugs and stuff like that. I didn't even know it had bugs. You know why? Because I just played the game. I didn't look for stuff like that. Didn't really care to. I just wanted to have fun. Where these days, if a reviewer says this game runs at 30 frames per second, depending on what company makes that game, people aren't going to want to play that game. And I'm not saying reviewers don't serve their purpose because they do. But for example, Forspoken on Metacritic right now, the Metacritic score is 64. I don't think that game is a 64 game. I think it's actually a higher rating than that. I would have probably said it's probably a 75. But gamers might actually pass over this game just because of the reviews on Metacritic. And the game is not that bad. It's a decent game. It's an okay game. It's fun. You can have fun on Forspoken. And that's the goal of video gaming, right? To have fun. And you can go down the list. Bleeding Edge, Redfall. These are games that did deserve criticism, but they weren't as bad as people say they were. They were actually okay games. Hey, but that's all I got for today, guys. If you guys did enjoy this content here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Turn on those notifications and like the video. It really helps your boy out. I promise you that. But also, are you one of those people that let reviews actually determine if you're going to purchase a game or not? Or do you actually kind of make your own decisions and you're like, you know what? This game is fun to me, and that's all that really matters. Let me know in the comments below. But I'm going to holler at y'all. I'm out. So leave the head at the door and just tune into the show and bring yourself and all the kindness to the chat. Let's go. You dig?